Let's take a look at international freight in 2023. So in the United States, December brought good news for retailers. There was pretty strong holiday season sales. And on the economic front, inflation in the United States is getting closer to the 2.6% target. The bottom line is that we may have avoided a recession, and that's a good thing. In the first quarter of the year, interest rates are expected to be eased, and looking ahead, it seems like the U.S. economy is in good shape for 2024. But let's talk freight, because that's why you're here. Most companies are seeing inventory levels go back to normal. That is good news. Small and mid-sized businesses that are on Fredos.com are cautiously optimistic. That 46% expect stable consumer demand in 24, and 41% even anticipate growth. So U.S. import volumes have surged, and that is a reflection of the strong retail sales in 2023, with volumes higher in November and December than they were in 2019. But the ocean freight market faces challenges. First, there's more ships. That means there's more supply than demand. Freight rates have also fluctuated, especially due to the peak season rate increases on Trans-Pacific and European routes as carriers raise prices to deal with that overcapacity that I mentioned. Let's talk air. In air freight, volumes are recovering, but they're still below the 2019 levels, and there are more planes since there's been a rise in passenger travel during the recovery from COVID. Rates, especially from China, have surged, and overcapacity will continue with us during 24. In the Panama Canal, restrictions on the number of ships that can pass is affecting Asia-U.S. East Coast shipments, with some carriers forced to reroute their ships. And finally, in the Red Sea, attacks by Houthi rebels, as everybody knows, has led to major carriers diverting shipments. We're talking ocean liners that represent over 60% of the industry's capacity. It means longer transit time, possible port congestion, empty containers getting delayed, uh, and ultimately potentially higher prices and surcharges. The international coalition has made efforts to deter those attacks, but the situation is tense and uncertain, which is basically international freight always. Overall, the Red Sea crisis has significantly impacted shipping routes, but has not yet caused a major disruption or rate increases, certainly not close to what we experienced in 2020 and 2021. The industry is working to adapt to these challenges, as the industry always has. If you look at the past couple of years, we've been through the Hengen bankruptcy, trade tariff wars with China, uh, pandemic, ships getting stuck in the Suez Canal, uh, the Houthis and the Red Sea. We've always bounced back, and the survey that we set, that we just ran across international importers in the United States showed exactly that. So here's to better 2024. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to follow Fredos in order to get more input and more data on how you can make your supply chains tick better.